how the Labour Party treats Rosie Duffield is how they will treat all women who dare to speak the truth. Take notes. Alright everyone, who is Rosie Duffield? Rosie Duffield is a UK Labour Party politician who has served as a Member of Parliament for Canterbury since 2017. For years now, she has been targeted and harassed by our favourite people. And when I say favourite people, I mean the lunatics, the extremists, the nutters, the trans cult, simply for her opposition to men being allowed to access single-sex spaces, such as prisons, school toilets, rape crisis centres and women's refuges. This all started when Rosie Duffield made the mistake of making a very dangerous and violent statement in public. She said, Only women have a cervix. Obviously, because of this, the trans believers had to defend themselves against such violence by threatening to rape and kill her. You know, the usual completely sane, completely reasonable way of trying to persuade somebody that your ideology needs to be taken seriously. Then, Sir Keir Starmer, the Labour Party leader and our soon-to-be dear leader, came out with this absolute banger about it. Is it transphobic to say only women have a cervix? Well, it is uh, something that uh, shouldn't be said. It is not right. But Andrew, I don't think... Who the f*** says that? What a weirdo. Anyway, for those who are not in the know, if you're not in the UK, or if you are in the UK and you just want to know what I think of the Labour Party, they're deranged. And they're especially deranged on the topic of what is a woman. For example, a couple of years ago, Labour Party MP Dawn Butler said on telly that babies are born without a sex. When, when a child is born, they are identified and observed in a particular a sex, aren't they? A child is born without sex. A child sex, is born they? without sex. OK, Dawn. I wouldn't take anything she says seriously, though, because she is also the same woman who said that giraffes are gay. Bit awkward. So if you want another example of how mental Labour are being at the moment, their Shadow Cabinet Minister, Emily Thornbury, I'm sure there was a cartoon about Thornberrys. She claimed that there are men who have cervixes. Emily, uh, do you agree with Keir Starmer? It's something that shouldn't be said. It isn't right. Well, it's actually inaccurate. There are men who have cervixes. Amazing. Men don't have vaginas or uteruses, so they don't have a cervix. In a tweet after the notoriously terrifying Only Women Have a Cervix incident, Rosie Duffield publicly questioned why she's being called a transphobe just simply for knowing that only women have a cervix. So after this, on the BBC Andrew Marr show, he asked Sir Keir Starmer about it and he said... So Rosie Duffield should not have said that. Can you explain to people watching why she should not have said that? The, the trans community um, are, as I say, the most marginalised um, and abused of, of many, many communities. Well, absolute bollocks. First of all, men in dresses are not the most marginalised and abused community. Support trans artists like me. I am a white, trans, disabled woman of colour. I am non-binary, bipolar and I have pizza SD. I have ADHD of the liver and heartburn. If you do not buy my art, the children of my people will mysteriously die of genocide. If you identify as a white, heterosexual man, you must pay double because you are a privileged oppressor who needs to pay me reparation for the millions of years of slavery and oppression that you have committed against my peoples. I have a brand new gold-plated enamel necklace made with my own design. Get one now! These are limited edition, so please order one quickly. I also have stickers, badges, stickers, prints, t-shirts, hoodies and goodies. Buying my art means supporting the most oppressed minority humanity has ever known on planet Earth. Buying my art means you are educating yourself to become a better person. If you do not buy my art, you are scum of the Earth. You are a racist, Nazi, fascist, transphobe, homophobe, bigotphobe, abs 
absolute worst kind of Hitler there is. I will be reporting you to the police for hateful crimes. Buy my art or forever be on the wrong side of history. Forever and ever. The only way to save yourself from eternal white people damnation is to buy my art. The famous artist, birdierose.com. The famous artist, birdierose.com. Dot com. For legal purposes, I have been advised to warn you that buying my art does not guarantee you a place in heaven with the Lord Baby Owen Jones and all of the lovely little lambs. And all of a sudden, you've got people like Sir Keir Starmer saying, oh, there needs to be a reasonable, mature debate, as if we haven't been trying to have that. I'm sick of being told both sides need to listen to each other. Humans cannot change sex. So what is it that women like me need to listen to a man who's claiming that he has magically changed into a woman for? Why do I need to listen to him? I don't. And God bless Rosie Duffield for being a lot kinder than me about it. And then you followed up and said, actually, I, I just think women have cervixes. Yeah, absolutely. And then what happened? Uh, and then I got um, all kinds of, like you said, all hell bro broke loose. I mean, I thought it was a good way, a sort of safe way to kind of put my opinions out there and the opinions of all of the women that I spoke to all of the time mm. who were asking someone to say something about this. You like, you, you did a tweet. And I thought, OK, I like that. It's just a tentative kind of toe in the water. And it was kind of amusing what you were saying, and you know, and uh, then... The people that started sort of calling for my beheading, you know, metaphorically. And yeah, but they were. You were getting well, explicit death threats. Yeah, there is that as well. But, but, you know, people calling for me to lose the whip in the party mm. are all the sort of people that were running or leading Labour societies. And that's where we've got the problem in the party, I think. She's so polite, so well-mannered, so softly spoken and conscientious about these issues. People like Keir Starmer, I bet he knows what's going on. He knows women are threatened. He knows they're threatened with violence and rape and death. Women's livelihoods are threatened. Many of us that are in this, and I guarantee every woman who is prominent as a public figure in this, has a male stalker who claims to be a woman. I just feel like cowards like Keir Starmer, they want to make it out like this is a both sides issue to save their own skin. And it ain't both sides. you got one side, it's a bunch of people who believe in this ideology that's not real, or at least want to defend this ideology on a power trip. They're lying and they're compelling other people to lie under threat of violence or repercussions, loss of livelihood, loss of social network. And on the other side, over here, hey, men and women who are concerned about what it means when we lie about reality. We're concerned about our right to freedom of speech and freedom of expression. But most of all, we're concerned about two big topics. One, sterilising children and putting them on a medical pathway for life without a real reason. Because there's no such thing as being born in the wrong body, so there's no way a child needs to be put on puberty blockers or on hormones, which leads them onto a pathway of having their healthy body parts amputated for no reason. That is a big issue. And the other issue is putting women and girls in danger. Taking away their sex-separated spaces, designated for women. Designated toilets, designated changing rooms, designated crisis centre, designated hospital facilities. These spaces are designated for women because we as a society have recognised and agreed that women are at risk of violence and sexual violence from men and they need to be protected. We can't go back on that and say, well, some of these men are women. No, 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 I ain't doing it. Tell me how that's a both sides issue and we're as bad as each other because I'm not seeing it. Rosie Duffield. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I welcome the government's invoking of Section 35 in this case, as the bill clearly conflicts with the Equality Act and would have repercussions for women, for women across the UK. Does the Secretary of State recognise the strength of feeling amongst women, women's rights groups and activists in Scotland that this bill seeks to allow anyone 
at all to, to legally self-identify as either sex and therefore enter all spaces, including those necessarily segregated by sex, such as domestic violence settings, changing rooms and prisons. And given the previous UQ, does he not understand how vitally important this is at the moment? Well, Mr. Mr. De- Mr. Deputy Speaker, I think, I think the Honourable Lady deserves a lot of respect for her courage in standing up on this issue. And, and I think when, when the statement of reasons is read later today, she will be proved to be absolutely right in the things she's saying. So for some context here, I think it's important to note that within the Labour Party, it's essentially forbidden to acknowledge that there is a conflict between women's rights and what we call trans rights, which isn't really a thing because men in dresses and women in trousers have got all the same rights as every other man and woman. For those of you who may not remember or may not be aware, Labour Party members have been investigated, interrogated, sanctioned and expelled if they even dare to commit sins such as acknowledging that biological sex is real or that humans cannot change sex. I was thinking about how they treat Rosie Duffield and how we're all going to be treated like that because that is a good example of how women are going to be treated, right? And then I thought about other times that Labour have done the dirty on women. I mean, I'm sure there's more than what I thought of, but here's what I thought of. Do you remember when Linda Bellos, I don't know if you know Linda Bellos, but she is a radical feminist. I think she's been a member of Labour as well, but she's been campaigning since like the 80s. And she originated Black History Month in the UK. Definitely an accomplished and inspirational woman. She was put on a Labour hit list, a hit list, by a teenage boy who was appointed as Labour Party Women's Officer. Let me rephrase, okay? Linda Bellos, an accomplished women's rights advocate, put on a hit list by a teenage boy who had been appointed the Women's Officer of Labour Party. Yeah, I said that, okay? I don't know if you all remember it, but I remember it blowing my mind. What the fuck? Does a horny teenage boy know about being a woman? Why was he the woman's officer? Why was he given such authority? What a slap in the face to all women everywhere, especially those in the Labour Party. Weird. This is what I mean when I say they're deranged. What's interesting is that after the hit list got put out, two women were suspended from the Labour Party, but that teenage boy got to keep his position of women's officer even though he was involved in the hit list. Interesting. So, you know, I'm just thinking time and time again, we're watching Labour ignore the growing threat and hostility towards women, even within their own party. I admire the brass neck that Rosie Duffield has. She's speaking up for women like me and for children. And I think that's amazing it's in fact heroic i don't want to be dramatic okay i don't want to be a drama queen about this but pretty heroic in my eyes so fast forward to 2024 a few days ago rosie duffield made an announcement which reads today i have made the extremely difficult decision not to attend local hustings events during this general election campaign hustings are usually an enjoyable and interesting part of any political campaign But sadly, the actions of a few fixated individuals have now made my attendance impossible. The constant trolling, spite and misrepresentation from certain people having built up over a number of years and being pursued with a new vigour during this election is now affecting my sense of security and well-being. In 2021, she had to pull out of a conference in Brighton because the police advised her to pull out for her own safety after threats were made towards her for knowing what a woman is. I think it's mad. In the past, Keir Starmer has spoken about this and responded to Rosie Duffield not being able to attend conferences for her own safety. And he claims that the Labour Party conferences are a safe space for all. Well, well, well. It's obviously a lie. Otherwise, Rosie Duffield would feel more than comfortable to attend. And she doesn't. So it's not safe, is it? 
I think it's completely unacceptable and to be honest I'm concerned threats against politicians seems to be the thing now. I've been on the left for a long time I'm not really welcome on the left anymore because I don't tend to like being told what to do. I remember the punch and Nazi thing which I was totally against because I saw the slippery slope that could lead to. I mean who gets to decide who a Nazi is and I I remember all my lefty mates back then going, oh, don't be stupid, nobody would ever call anybody a Nazi for no reason. Fast forward eight years, all those people call me a Nazi for knowing what a woman is. I remember the throwing the milkshake at politicians thing, which was an extension of the punching Nazi thing. I've always been against the throwing a milkshake thing because I've always said that it's not many steps from milkshake to a dangerous liquid. I don't think it's acceptable, but you know, all my lefty mates at the time told me I was being a drama queen and a conspiracy theorist and there's nothing wrong with throwing milkshake at politicians, at least we're not chopping their heads off. I've noticed there's a lot of talk like that, a lot of glorifying violence against people for having a different opinion. We should be concerned about this. It's not as if violence doesn't get committed against politicians. It wasn't long ago that our local MP David Amess was murdered by a religious extremist and everybody pussyfooted around the issue trying to make out like that had something to do with online bullying for all this talk about wanting to push back on online bullying nobody gives a fuck about the online bullying that rosie duffield faces every day what was concerning to me as well is the abuse i saw her suffer after she made her announcement but the most infamous one i witnessed was lord cashman an actor and a member of the labor party and he went on twitter to call rosie frit and lazy so I looked up the definition of frit. Um, it's a slang word for someone who's not brave, basically a coward. I don't know why he didn't just say coward. It's pretty standard for a man who has no idea what it's like to be a woman, who is being threatened and harassed, sent death threats by deranged men, and a lot of them will be the deranged sort of men who are claiming to be women. This guy has the gall to call Rosie Duffield a coward. Cashman did later offer an apology of some sort, but I wouldn't really call it an apology, mate. He didn't name Rosie Duffield, and he didn't specify exactly what he was apologising for, which I think is really funny, because it reminds me of when you're a kid and you are forced by your parents to apologise to the one sibling that you don't like. Your parents force you to apologise and you go like this. Sorry! And your parents go, Birdie, say sorry properly. And you go like this. I'm sorry, you're such a knob. And then you get a bloody good hiding. Worth it though. To me, that is what his apology comes off like. Something disturbing about it though is that Keir Starmer hasn't issued any sort of statement in support of Rosie Duffield. He also hasn't condemned the abuse and harassment that she faces merely for knowing what a woman is. I mean, come on, we all know what a woman is. She ain't lying. She ain't doing anything wrong. He can't condemn it? No? Did it too hard for him to just go, do you know what? What you lot are doing to her is out of order. I personally think Labour Party's silence speaks volumes and to rub salt in the wound Keir Starmer did actually write a really heartfelt statement about the anniversary of Joe Cox being murdered by an ideological extremist and it's weird to me that he can talk about violence against politicians he can talk about violence against women but he's not going to acknowledge rosie duffield who's a member of his party who's here and alive today right now being harassed and abused having to work in a hostile environment under his leadership and he's not going to acknowledge it that's cowardice while i was recording this video something extraordinary happened Headlines started flying around a reporting that Keir Starmer now admits Tony Blair was right. Women have a vagina and men have a penis. Does anyone else think this is mental? But Rosie Duffield has been saying this for years and all Keir Starmer had to say about it was she shouldn't be saying things like that. It's not appropriate. It's unacceptable. It's toxic. This isn't right. She shouldn't be saying it. So he throws her under the bus publicly. But when a man says it, Tony Blair says, Oi mate, did you know... 
that women have a vagina and men have a penis. And Keir Starmer goes, oh my God, you're right. And then he goes, hey, newspapers, I just want you to know that I know what a woman is and I know what a man is because Tony Blair told me. And you know what? I shouldn't really be surprised because a lot of women that are in this, and, and men, you might have noticed this as well, what will happen, especially online, is a woman will say something completely benign, like the most boring, factual thing you can imagine. Humans cannot change sex or only women give birth. Only women have a cervix. And there's always some preachy, holier-than-thou, lefty man freaking out at her, telling her how hateful she is and what a bigot she is, calling her a Nazi and all these names. And there'll be another man that comes along and says, well, it's kind of true that only women can give birth or it's kind of true that only women have a cervix. And that beardy man will step down and agree with him and talk to him like a normal human being and have a discussion. I don't usually throw the words misogynistic and sexist out. But I think this case warrants it. I also want to point out Rosie Duffield cheekily wrote this and I love her for it. So from now on, I shall be submitting my every comment and thought, particularly those mainstream views which most people agree with, to the former Labour Prime Minister so that it can officially be detoxified. I want to say this. Rosie Duffield is an absolute legend. She's one of the very few politicians who for years now has been willing to say out loud what a woman is and that is an indication of how pathetic and spineless politicians across all of the political spectrum have become. Rosie Duffield knows what a man and a woman is and so does everybody else on this planet. That is not a crime. She doesn't have to obey the ideological cult of trans and neither does anybody else. Rosie Duffield has as much right as anybody else to tell the truth. In my opinion, the Labour Party is a mix of stupid, cowardly and angry, which make them dangerous. How they treat Rosie Duffield is how they will treat all women who dare to speak the truth. Take notes. Early in the morning, as the sun comes up, I just want to have a cup. There's one drink. That's the one for me Won't you please Make me a cup of tea Support trans artists like me I am a white, trans, disabled woman of colour I am non-binary, bipolar and I have pizza SD I have ADHD of the liver and heartburn If you do not buy my art the children of my people will mysteriously die of genocide. If you identify as a white heterosexual man, you must pay double because you are a privileged oppressor who needs to pay me reparation for the millions of years of slavery and oppression that you have committed against my peoples. I have a brand new gold plated enamel necklace made with my own design. Get one now! These are limited edition, so please order one quickly. I also have stickers, badges, stickers, prints, t-shirts, hoodies and goodies. Buying my art means supporting the most oppressed minority humanity has ever known on planet Earth. Buying my art means you are educating yourself to become a better person. If you do not buy my art, you are scum of the Earth. You are a racist, Nazi, fascist, transphobe, homophobe, bigotphobe, absolute worst kind of Hitler there is. I will be reporting you to the police for hateful crimes. Buy my art or forever be on the wrong side of history. Forever and ever. The only way to save yourself from eternal white people damnation is to buy my art. The famous artist, birdierose.com. The famous artist, birdierose.com. Dot com. For legal purposes, I have been advised to warn you that buying my art does not guarantee you a place in heaven with the Lord Baby Owen Jones and all of the lovely little lambs.